So I want to just go ahead and record this. So I got the air pressurized, and if you hear it on the camera, you can hear a little leaking right through, you know, the fitting and stuff. Um, this is actually a disc brake um, compressor, but I just stuck a rag in there and compressed it to close off both ends of that. And you can hear the air where it's kind of leaking past the towel and the... I didn't have time to search for everything. You, know, you don't have to. But... Be quiet so you can hear. There's no gurgling down there. Anything like that. Um, I can hear... Obviously this pump's not going to move around like that, but... I can hear a little escape from that snap to connect just the tiniest bit maybe maybe not it might be this but I still want to replace that so anyway that's definite proof that nothing in the rest of this oil system is bad it's sealing up there's no leaks the only leaks I hear from this area and right there which are minor so, alrighty, time to get an estimate together and get some parts coming. So parts came in for the gray truck, <clears throat> starting with the uh, high pressure oil pump. Now he didn't want to go with Ford. Um, I think he's at the point where he only drives his truck a few thousand miles a year, he said. And he's at the point where he really th doesn't think he even needs it, so he's probably gonna sell it. <clears throat> so if you guys need, uh, you know, an alternative to a Ford pump. I've used these before and like them. The Boss Tech. There's the part number. Uh, about 500 bucks. And it comes with the gasket for the cover. You always want to replace that because you don't want to have to go back in. These are all your branch tube seals. These you definitely need. These are all the O-rings for the pump itself and for the uh, the branch tube up there on top so there's the part number and it comes and they they put this in this kit right from Ford and then of course see if I can get it out of here I gotta wedge it in there now I gotta use this box to send the core back there we go so there's the new pump. We're going to leave her sealed up until it's ready to go in. Um, so I bought this from Thoroughbred Diesel uh, just because they're not far from me. About two hours or so. So I usually get stuff pretty quick. And if you buy it from Thoroughbred, you don't have to pay the core charge up front. As long as you send the old one back in 30 days in the same box and everything. <clears throat> they don't give you a return uh, these are instructions they don't give you a return label but that's all right I mean it's not that expensive it's it's worth it to not have to pay that up front core all right so I can already got the uh, I already got the valley in here cleaned up I used my carbide scrapers and cleaned all all that cleaned all the anything that could get contaminated in here I was real careful not to let anything fall and then I take a blow gun and uh, blow out the holes for the uh, cover mount and then the turbo pedestal mount. You got the, there we go, one, two, three, four. So everything's blown out and clean. Well, that o rings in the kit, we'll replace that. He did not want to replace the branch tube. So we're just going to get that o ring out right there, too. That's in that kit from four I just showed you, that pack. So we'll replace that one, that one, and then there's one that goes on the top of the pump. The, that seals too. So I'm going to get this cleaned up, get the new O-rings on, and we're going to mount the pump. Okay, the O-rings are installed. And as far as mounting the pump, this first of all doesn't have to be timed. It's, a, it's just got to be mounted. The mounting bolts... There's three of them. I torque those to 20. 
I torque these to 12. I think the manual says 18 and 11, maybe? I don't remember, but I've always just done 20 and 12. Never had a problem. So, next thing I gotta get the uh, cover cleaned up. We'll get the cover mounted. And moving on. Alright, so I got the cover cleaned up. Doesn't have to be perfect, but just try to get all the loose junk off there so it doesn't fall down in. And then I pulled the old gasket out, and when you get the new gasket, there's going to be a side that looks flat, and the other side looks kind of pointed. The flat side goes into the groove. pointed side is facing up. So I'm going to go ahead and put the gasket in, set it on there, bolt it down, and I'll catch back up with you. One more thing real quick. Where the back aluminum plate meets the uh, the block, you need to put a bead of silicone there, and it's hard to get to, but one right there too, or those will leak. Just put a little bead of silicone there, and then you can put the cover down in there. Okay, so we're putting it back together here. I got a, let's see, I got the pump cover on, the IPR valve in there. Which, if you guys have never done this before, most people don't know. But once you tighten, oops, once you tighten your IPR valve, if you don't have the electrical part lined up where you want it, you can turn just the solenoid. This turns on there; it's fine. You can you can twist it around to find where you want that to point. Um, so I think. Now we're going to go ahead and put, uh, well first we've got to reseal the EGR cooler even though it's blocked off from the exhaust side, it's still got coolant running through it. So I got it over here and I went all eight monkey stupid and tore the bag so you can't see the part number, but if you Google 6 liter EGR cooler seal kit, whatever, it'll come up. And the most important things really are this O-ring that I need to replace right here and this guy right here because this sucker will definitely leak. It just is a snap to connect. So you definitely have to replace this. And then we're not going to put these gaskets on because there's nothing coming through here obviously. But normally you put your gaskets on there for the exhaust side. Now these there's a uh, rounded side with that green o-ring see how it kind of protrudes from the blue silicone this side's flat it's flat on the inside you want the green o-ring back on the tube see how it's flat that's this is the snap to connect side so the way that works is this side I can't move it with one hand but we slide that off clean it up and you're gonna slide this one on all the way up to that stop right there then you put this in the truck get it all mounted then you can slide this and it'll snap over the uh, where it goes into the oil cooler right here so let me get everything resealed and I'll come back okay so I got the intake all cleaned up we're putting new gaskets on the intake obviously I mounted the EGR cooler um, to mount it The O-ring goes up into this port, put these two studs in there, get the one bolt back there, and like I said, just shove that thing back pretty far. I got a horse fly attacking me. Um, on the intake, these are reusable gaskets, but after the truck gets so old, it's well worth just replacing them. Here's the Ford part number two of them come with it um, there is an up and down side these only will fit one way so if you look at it there's this little tab that sticks up it will always face up if you're in the truck see how it sits right in between there so you put that in there this is how I do it put that on then get two uh, 
two bolts. Hopefully you have pictures or you know where these go, which ones are studs and which ones are regular bolts. And see how the gasket kind of holds the bolt. So I'll put two in as I'm trying to set this thing down in the truck. Oh, whoa, about dropped you. And then one more thing, there's a donut gasket that goes right there. So that's going to be right here is where it sits. And there's the part number. Can't see it, can you? You definitely need that guy. And for some reason, they've changed them to orange. They used to be black. Let's get this out of here. Oh, geez. So I just set that one right down in there. It sits in there pretty snug. Now we can just lower, we'll lower the intake right in and set it down. And then after that, we gotta put the turbo pedestal in, which we'll have to kinda snake it up underneath that. Oh, and always put your, make sure your clamps back there for the EGR cooler ready to go. The intake's in. Um, at this point, on an 03 is when you wanna go ahead and plug in your ICP back there. Uh, there. Then your IPR. So I'm gonna do that. I need to replace some loom on this wiring. Just right here. That's for the uh, ICP sensor. Or I'm sorry, IPR valve. Um, I got I got a whole roll of it there, so I can donate some. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm still getting over this. After that. Um, we're going to put our pedestal for the turbo in, we'll put the turbo drain pipe in, um, new o-rings on it, then I'm going to roll the turbo charger in there, uh, put the turbo feed on it, which the feed line goes right there, right there. And up to the top, we got new gaskets for it and a new uh, ring down there. So I think we'll go ahead and do that before I turn the camera back on. Um, I'm only making those two connections in the back right now with the wiring. Then once we get the turbo in, uh, then things are going to start going back together real quick. Uh, of course, we'll have to reattach the downpipe. Uh, da, 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 I'm trying to think of anything else, but you know, pretty much, like I said, it's just reverse of uh, disassembly, and so I'm gonna get to it, and I'll turn you guys on if I think of anything you need to. Uh, I need to point out. I just wanted to show you real quick the seal kit. They call it a hardware kit for the turbo. That's the number there. It gives you the gasket for the top of the feed line right here that sits on top of the turbo. The blue o-ring goes down here on the base of the feed. And the two yellows go on your oil return. And then uh, the hardware, you get three new bolts for the turbo. So I'm going to go ahead and reseal these and hang the turbo in there. All right, so this is where a lot of people kind of screw up when putting the turbo in. Um, you have to put this tube, the return line, in before you even carry the turbo up here. Uh, now, on the newer trucks, on a, uh, I think late 04s, but I know 05, 06, 07, there's an updated drain tube, oil return tube like this. Um, and they said it's because of this bend right here is too sharp so the updated one has a um, basically the bends not kind of crimped but the biggest thing is on these O3s this flange is solid I mean it's it's a big heavy duty you're not gonna bend that when you're going to roll the turbo in there um, 
the O uh, five six sevens and some O fours. These flanges they made real thin and uh, cheap, and you can easily bend them when you're trying to put the turbo back in. So my suggestion is, if you're going to have this out, or you're pulling the turbo on a on the uh, later model ones, go ahead and buy the updated one because the updated one has these big heavy duty uh, flanges like this old style. Uh, but first, or anyway, so go ahead and put some oil on the new O-rings and then you're just going to slide it into place here and it's going to, maybe I can... Okay, so the bottom, it'll just wiggle in there. There you go. It's seated. And then the top, see that flange is sitting. You'll feel when it's sitting seated that way. And then the flange sits right there. That way when the turbo goes in, you literally kind of have to roll the turbo in and roll it down to where it'll sit on top of here and the sit down onto that but that's it really now it's just a matter of just take your time roll it in there real slow and make sure that the oil drain tube or hole in the bottom of the turbo rolls on here real smooth don't force anything just let it go down on there and you have to push down just a little bit once you make sure it's lined up just make sure you get some oil on that o-ring so you don't nick it Okay, so listen, there's nothing fun about putting this turbo in. Anybody that tells you, oh yeah, I put a six liter turbo in, it was a blast, is a liar and you shouldn't talk to them. There's no simple way to describe how to put these in. O3s, like I said before, are a little different because um, this guy right here in the back so I just was wrestling this one and I had to stop and regroup um, but look at the see the tab in the back the notch there so you're coming in at this angle and that pin is wanting to hit here so you kind of got to put this turbo in let me see if it's the best way I can describe to do this like I said it's almost impossible to just show you but as it's going in you kind of got to put it in like this so that that pin is catching there and then you got a pin here so you're going in like that you're gonna kind of roll it and come down like that at the same time you're getting this lined up right uh, nope, right there Guys, all I can tell you is finesse, patience. If the wife and kids are driving you crazy, and you think, you know what, I'm going to go put that turbo on my six liter to get away. No, don't do that. If you're already pissed off, just don't do it, because this, this will piss you off more. Just, just drink beer. But, I mean, trust me, there's worse. There's a lot worse turbos to put in, but... Like I said, just you have to take your time, come in this direction, and it's all about finesse. These things, I mean, this one was broke when I got it. Matter of fact, I'm gonna do it. You know, take a bungee cord, bungee cord that up out of the way. Anything to make it easier, but you have to have patience and take your time when putting this thing in. The O3 is back together. Everything's where it should be. Make sure I didn't knock that back. Nope, okay. Uh, top the coolant off here. So, I'm going to show you guys when you do something like this, how long it takes to get these to start usually. Because not only was the fuel filter off, so it's got to fill back up. Um, well, I had this ready to go. But the oil rail has to fill back up and this has decided not to talk anymore so hold on a minute let me fix the scanner 
All right, I don't know what that was all about. So I got my Thickum pulled up. I really didn't need that. Thickum sink just to make sure that we are getting sync between the crank and cam. Um, that's our main power. ICP desired and actual. It's, it's common on the O3s for this to be reading a little bit with nothing going on there. Um, and then IPR valve just to make sure it's working. So the first two I'm going to focus on here is desired and actual. But actually we're going to come over here first because if we don't have low end oil pressure we don't have anything. So let's crank it. This takes a while. You're going to have to let the starter cool. You're going to have to let batteries recharge. So until we see that needle move we shouldn't be getting much anything. It's going to take a while. Okay, usually when the odometer opens back or lights back up like that, I let off. So we're going to let it cool down for a second. So you can see we got a little more, probably 10 pounds. And the high pressure rail is what it's thinking. So let me let it cool for a second. Okay, second try. I'm seeing about 70 pounds, 80 pounds on the scanner. About 100. Well, okay. So it just came up. Let's let it cool. So now the rails are starting to fill. So I'm going to let it cool again. All right, so we saw the low pressure needle move. So there's actual pressure at the top. And there's my IPR valve at the bottom. And it's probably going to go to 85 because uh, it's still going to be trying to fill this rail. So we need 500 PSI to start. So let's try it again. It's building pretty quick. We're up there now. Okay, let's take a break. I'm going to let these batteries charge up real good. We got smoke from the tailpipe so that means we're making combustion let's go up here real quick um, oh sink let's check the sink just to make sure everything's talking yep okay oh we just tried to start all right man it's smoking like a freight train it's normal don't get freaked out they're gonna smoke uh, all right, let's look at the IPR and the, let me cycle it. And it always does that. Okay, let's look at the IPR at the bottom and the actual pressure at the top. Or I'm sorry, IPR valve at the bottom percentage and the ICP pressure is on the top there. So it went to 85. It's trying to build it up. We still got... There she goes. So let me come out here. Show you. It's, it's normal. It's going to smoke here at first. I don't know if the screen really shows it, but walk around and check everything go ahead and take our charger off here all right make sure we don't have anything coming out the bottom no leaks no drips I'm sure it sucked down a bunch of cooling already I want to let it run for a second, and then we'll fire it back up. Yeah, about right there, so I got to top it off a little bit. Oh, all right. Let's see what it does. Oh, it sounds good. This truck runs amazing. 
But if you didn't see the first video, that's 376,000 on all I can tell there's the original the original uh, engine. Okay, so our rail should be primed now. So let's see what it does. Cycle the key. And never loses communication that fast on anything else other than just a custom data list. Alright, so I don't care about the Ficum. We know it's good. We know we got sync. We know the battery's a little low. So let's watch the IPR. Fires right up. All right, guys, I'm gonna let this thing run, get up the temp, top off the coolant, and then uh, I'm gonna take it down the road and make sure everything's good. And uh, we'll come back and do an outro here. Well. It runs great. It's got all the power now. Um, I mean, when you if you want it to go, it'll go. So I'm pretty happy with it. And actually, this truck drives really straight. Um, I mean. 376,000 miles if diesel fuel wasn't extremely expensive because uh, Tim's planning on selling this truck he just doesn't drive it enough he said so uh, you know he's it's just not worth it for him to keep this thing around and keep putting money into it but in all honesty it's got a you know it's got quite a bit of rust from being in Ohio which there's nothing you can do about that but other than that, it, uh, I mean, it steers good, it rides good, the power's there. So, make a turn around up here. So, I always say that, you know, a six liter can be a good vehicle. And this one's just proof of it. Turn around and head back to the house here. Want to see? Oh, oh! Let's just see how she runs. That's how it should run. Yeah, and you know. I don't know if people would say I'm beating on somebody else's truck. I'm not beating on it. I know where to push it, but I also, if something's going to happen, I want it to happen while I have it. If it's going to pop a boost tube, because I didn't get a clamp tight enough or get the boost tubes, the boots clean, you know, get oil off of them. I've had that happen before where I didn't get them clean enough. And next thing you know, you know, I give it back to the customer out driving it and they get a mile down the road and it pops off and they have no power and that's that's not that's how we learn so I always drive a customer's truck to make sure that it's right when they get it back they should be able to go in it and they should be able to hold it to the floor if they want to so as you can see it's not hurt everything's nice and cool so we're going to take this one back and this is going to be my outro because I'm ready to go eat. But as always guys, like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate you guys watching. I really do. I don't get anything from making these videos as far as financial. I just do it to try to help you guys. Um, and apparently, you know, it helps because the owner of this truck Tim reached out to me through these videos and he knew enough to knew to you know kind of know what he was getting into and what he had already checked um, was good so a little dairy bar in town just kicking it tonight all right guys I'll see you on the next one